Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, that's wait, that's a lot of zombies. Oh my god. How does that work? Okay, wait, no, I actually need to get out of here. Okay. No no. No no guys. Please no. That's all you how does this happen? How, I thought that there's like a zombie siege, but I didn't think that they can get this large. Okay, wait, let's actually get out of here. Let's actually get out of here. Can it please just let me bridge up? Can it please just let me bridge? Mm -hmm. Wait. Why did I spawn? Why are these guys not attacking me? Wait, where's my stuff? Where's my stuff? Where's my stuff? There's my stuff. Okay, wait, what's happening? This is so weird. What is go- Oh! I'm a zombie! Let's go! So, I guess it would appear near Halloween time. Zombies have a different effect on me. Uh, because we have obviously turned into a zombie. But because it's Halloween is, is coming up, I say that we should just rock it. Uh, so yeah. We have a uh, zombie skin, I guess, until I guess the end of this episode. Uh, so this should be quite fun. But I should really say, hey everyone, it is me, TNT, and uh, and today we're back with episode 10 on the Sascraft server. Today we have the full Halloween event going on. Now I did actually already get the person that I'm hunting down from the pumpkin that we made last episode. Um, and I recorded it, but the recording file got corrupted or something, which makes me really, really sad. Um, but we got Grand Swede, and Grand's one person I did not want to have to kill, uh, because we have PvP'd in the past, and I died with, uh, Grand basically taking very little damage to no damage. Um, so I don't think that we would be able to PvP them and win, which means that we probably have to go for a trap. I also want to design this trap though to where they're not going to lose items because I would feel really bad about making them lose items. Uh, plus they don't really know how much they're going to be playing on the server. Um, they're thinking about leaving and making them fully restart I think would just kind of make them want to consider leaving the server more. Uh, so we need to go design a trap in a testing world and see what we can get done. So what we have here is a lot of dispensers and I really... I'm trying to not kill them with the use of lava or explosions because I don't want them to lose items. So yeah, we, we gotta try to kill them in a friendly, good way. Um, <laughs> that's a fun sentence. So we're currently in my testing world, and we have a little, little contraption set up here. So basically, oh wait, I should put armor on myself first. Okay, great, so now we have uh, full protection, armor, netherite, a protection for whatnot. Uh, so basically the way that this is working is with arrows. I was going to do regular arrows, but I realized that's not nearly enough damage, so I think that we'll have to do uh, arrows of harming. I think we will only need 32 arrows per dispenser to actually kill them, um, and that would be about 1.3 chests full of harming arrows, which is a lot. That is a lot. We have the enough. We have enough arrows, we just need to get the potions. Um, I don't actually know how to craft them. I don't know how many arrows you get per per each potion. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I still have another idea in mind. But anyway, so if we fire this up, of course this would all be done with redstone, um, not command blocks. But command blocks will just make it easier for now. Uh, so I'll just show you guys a little bit of what happens. Um, once I throw that in, this starts going ham. So the plan would be to do something where I have like a chest. So if you guys do not know, Grand actually gave me access to their creeper farm for free, which was so nice of them. Um, and because they kind of went offline for a little bit, as kind of said earlier, I was planning just to like do like something kind of like this. So I was thinking something kind of like this, you know, where, where it's nice and big, it's flashy, we put it right in the middle of the creeper farm. Uh, he walks in, he's like, oh my gosh, what is this? It says a few signs like, oh Grand, thank you so much for letting me use your creeper farm. It's been helping me so much with rockets. I just wanted to give you a little treat. Opens the chest. It's a trap chest. All of this opens up. He falls and then he's put into the piston room. Uh, hopefully some pistons also close it up afterwards. Hopefully. Um, and then, yeah, basically he falls into here. Um, and arrows start shooting out from everywhere. So let's actually show you guys how much damage this thing does. Um, I just got rid of all my armor. Alright, so here we go. So we just set ourselves into survival, and then we throw this in. Uh, we teleport ourselves in, and you can see that it does take a lot of time. This went a lot faster with my chest plate off, um, which you'll probably have off. Uh, let us turn this off though before it gets too laggy up in here. So I am very curious to see how this one goes. So we have two end crystals here. These um, have arrows in them. So if we just set ourselves to survival and then run uh, this command right here, 
I want to know if our stuff, any of it at all, is lost because there's two things exploding. So theoretically, if they do not go off at the exact same time, things can get blown up. But I think that looks like everything. We have our armor and then we should have basically two inventories of coarse dirt, which we do have. Okay, well, we might just be able to use two end crystals then. That's a lot of, that's a lot of damage really fast. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's probably the way to go. Now, I did also find that if you're one block above the end crystal or one block below it, you will actually survive. So you have to be on the same level, and that's why I've covered this whole thing with signs now. So that way, even if Grand tries to place a block and get up, they won't be able to. So they like, they should be, it should be a pretty quick, fast, clean death. It should be pretty good. Um, so yeah, I think I think this is what we're going to be going for. It's really really simple compared to that too, um, and it should be instantaneous death. You only need one end crystal. We're doing two. Okay, so this is a little little tester about how it will look, how it will act. Um, so basically, he can be standing any distance away. He has to open that shulker box though. And I'll set myself to survival. And as soon as he opens up the shulker box, nothing happens. Oh, come on. <laughs> Alright, so this time it should actually work. I forgot that observers are only one tick pulse, and that pistons don't work with that well. Um, but now when we open this, once again, doesn't matter what distance, we should... No! Too late! Okay, we need to switch some timings around. Ugh, that is depressing. Okay, I have high hopes about this one. So if we go in... Okay, that honestly might be a little bit too much delay. Okay, this is it, this is it. I know the ground is now ancient debris, that's just in case it does not go well and I have to remake it again. It'll just make life easier because it doesn't blow up. Uh, but if we open this, hopefully... Good. That was full armor. It's pretty quick. That was that was good, right? Yeah, I would probably die. That's not saying much. I know, but I'm something. Okay, we're gonna test it out against some god apples too and whatnot, just to make sure. All right, so now we're gonna pre-gap with a golden apple right before we go into this, um, and hopefully, and I forgot to add the crystals. All right, all right. So let's try this with a regular golden apple. We open up the shulker. Okay, regular golden apple is an instant KO. We could add another crystal in the mix, <laughs> theoretically? I don't know if they'll lose items or not though. We'll have to test it out, I guess. Okay, somehow we actually ended up glitching out the pistons. That's so funny. <laughs> Listen, look, we glitched out the pistons. Looking You're looking at a piston without its head. Alright, so let's, let's try this again with a god apple. I have a good feeling that this is a KO for sure. Um, really? God apples are that power- that was four! That was four end crystals. What? Alright, but I think it's time to actually construct this thing in Tazcraft, um, and it should not be hard. I think I have all the resources that I need to make up the resources I actually need, if that makes sense. Um, so we just need like a lot of repeaters, redstone, pistons, sticky pistons, stuff like that. And it should not be that hard to construct once we actually have all the materials. And after only about 20 minutes of work, we actually have this whole thing basically completed. So we place a few signs. Uh, it's unimportant. It's just saying thank you so much. And if we open up this shulker box, uh, there we go. You can see that the floor opens up and that should make Grand fall in. Uh, so it's all set, but I don't think that Grand's gonna show up for a while. Uh, and I need to just AFK here and like let them know somehow that like it's here. Uh, but yeah, I think that it's basically ready to go. So let's go move on to something else, I guess. You don't know how happy I was to come back and sit down at my computer and see this message right here. It brought me such joy. I didn't know for sure that it was actually the trap that I set, so I said, oh rip, just just trying to see what exactly what happened. And then once I saw this message, I knew it was confirmed. We got him, boys. Now, I did not get it on camera, sadly. I did not think that they'd fall for it this fast. I had this whole plan to have OG and come in, pretend to kill them, like pretend to be their hunter. That way they'd actually fall for the trap. Next thing I know, they 
they have already fell fallen for it. Um, so yeah, I wasn't able to get it on camera, but here is a quick reenactment um, of Gran going over to his creeper farm, seeing all of this glorious, glorious gold, iron, and di a single diamond block, opening the shulker and falling into the pit and blowing up. Absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful sight to see. Um, but yeah, we get 32 diamonds, so there's actually more news on this. So it turns out we finally figured out the person that's hunting us. It's not because they actually fired an attack on us, it's because they straight up told us. Um, and that is because their PC actually is not working properly, which means that they can't really do the competition as of now. Um, which isn't a huge deal. I told them that once they get their computer fixed, they'll have a week to kill me after that. Um, so it doesn't look like we'll have to be dealing with that this episode. Um, but we will be dealing it with it sometime in the future. Um, and if you guys are wondering, it is Kermit MC who recently changed their name to Idiot MC um, that is coming after us. So should be should be interesting. I've never PvP'd them before. I don't know how good they are at traps. Uh, but yeah, I think it's time to take this whole contraption down. It looks like it works correctly, which is really nice. Oh, and also, Gran did not lose any items with that trap. It worked very well in keeping his items all nice and safe, so that way he does not have to go through the grind of getting them back, which is awesome, which is exactly what I've hoped for, so really happy about that. But now I actually want to move away from traps and focus more on my base, uh, and I think the place to start is probably the pond in the middle. Uh, so as you guys already know, we already made like the outline of the pond, and like we've made the pond itself, now we have to make koi fish and then put water into it. So I think I'm gonna mess around in a testing world for a little bit and just see what I can create. After only about an hour, I came up with these two koi fish, which I think look amazing. This one's just a duplicate of this guy. Uh, but just, you know, rotate and whatnot. Uh, but I think that they look actually really good. I'm low-key impressed with myself. Um, I feel like I can make it better in some way. Well, I have the time to make it better. I just, honestly, I don't know how. Um, but yeah, I think I think this is definitely good enough for the middle of our base. The only problem is uh, that you can see this is uh, what the pond kind of looks like. Um, and it's not going to be big enough. So we got to... We gotta expand that out quite a bit, which, it sucks, it honestly does suck, but we'll, we'll deal with it, and this should turn out pretty good. Uh, so I think we should go get started on the Taskcraft server again. You know, I may have gone a little bit large. <laughs> this thing is a huge pond, it'll give us plenty of space, and I think it'll look beautiful, um, but my gosh, this is a large, like looking at it from a high distance and like seeing the whole flattened out area and then just seeing this gigantic sphere, uh, it looks great, but wow, <laughs> we might have gone a little bit too big on this, uh, but you know what, who really cares? It will look great with the koi fish, we will add some other things if the koi fish do not fill up the whole area, um, and we'll make it look good no matter what, but yeah, this is... This is already taking a while, it's going to take much longer. We're only about halfway through, but as we continue on throughout each layer, they get smaller and smaller and faster and faster, so should be good in, I'd say, about two hours. <laughs> After quite some time, we're finally on the last layer to the one that we did uh, for the only like 31 by 31 uh, radius, sorry, diameter circle. Um, so that circle, that sphere hit all the way down to this layer right here. Um, and we have now hit that with the 51 by 51 diameter uh, sphere, but we still got a long ways to go down. I think this is nine layers away now from being done, so not that bad. Going one minute over two hours, I've officially taken out this whole area. It is finally done. This is the whole sphere, or half a sphere. Um, and yeah, it is humongous, but it should be re looking really cool once we get all of this changed out into sandstone and then also fill it up with water and koi fish and whatnot. Should be really, really cool center to our base. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to finally have that done. And after only about 45 minutes of work, I think we have this pit finally all filled with sandstone. Uh, so yeah, it's looking even better than it did before, so I'm really excited to see how this thing looks with water filled in it. Oh shoot, I missed a spot. Um, 
But yeah, first we need to get the fish done, which I'm also excited to do, but also the most nervous to do. Uh, we need to get a lot of materials and we gotta work really hard. I should probably try to get a second monitor just hooked up with at least a few pictures, that way I can just kinda see um, the koi fish and also be working on it in the actual Minecraft window. Uh, but we will be handling that probably tomorrow because I have to first get all the materials, which is gonna take some time. Oh, I'm awfully nervous about making these koi fish, but I can't think of anything else I can do to procrastinate longer, uh, except for maybe gathering more materials, but I also don't want to do that. So I think, I think we should just get started. So I want this to be about half in the middle, like right in the middle. Um, so this is 51 blocks, like radius, or sorry, diameter, uh, which would make it about 26 blocks uh, radius. And then we want half of that for the middle block, so that's about uh, 13 blocks in. And then that should be about the middle block. Um, I will highlight the middle block right here on this photo that's apparently appearing on screen once I get to editing this video. Um, so yeah, let us let us begin. And that's really it for the first layer of this fish. It was really simple actually. Uh, so this is exactly center when it comes to uh, this way and this way. I think, I hope, um, and yeah, so if we just basically flip this and then mirror it, I think, or basically just rotate it on the z-axis, that made me jump, oh my gosh, okay, sorry, like I was saying, um, or basically just rotate it on the z-axis by 180 degrees and put it on that side right in the middle, uh, I think it should look pretty good, I was kind of worried about placing this fish, but I think it will be fine probably um so yeah this is this fish is done for the first layer and i think i'm just gonna finish this fish off before going on to the other one um so yeah but fun fact it is now december like 13th or something yeah it's the 13th um so i think it's time to take this pumpkin down i know uh there's i've personally i've hunted grand uh but so far i've not hunted sorry i've not been hunted I think I already said this, but yeah, we will be getting to being hunted probably next episode. But yeah, I actually need all this orange concrete for the koi fish, um, so it's about time that we bring this pumpkin down. And with a little help from Jack Baguette, we were able to take down the whole pumpkin in like less than 15 minutes-ish. Uh, so yeah, now we're off to my base. We have so much... Uh, orange concrete, so we're, we're good to go. So progress is actually coming along really, really, really well. Uh, we got basically, I think, the top part done. Of course, we're gonna mix it up, add some different colors in, um, but right now we're just gonna do orange as a placeholder. Uh, so we still have to do the bottom. I'm wondering if it'll be easier to add water first and then do the bottom. That way it kind of gives me a place to work from. Uh, but if we just fly up really fast and then we look right on down, it has a good shape. I like how it looks so far. Um, I think adding colors, of course, is going to make it a lot better. Uh, but yeah, so far, so good. Fun fact, while recording this, I actually have the Wii Channel theme just playing in my ears. I have it on YouTube in the background, just thought I'd share. Anyways, I did a little bit building off camera, and we got a second koi fish. These still need to be textured, and I also still need to work on their bottoms. Oh my gosh. That's depressing. Um, but yeah, they... They are looking so far so good, and now the bottom should actually be pretty easy. I just need to do some scaffolding sort of stuff. I think I'm not actually going to use real scaffolding, I'll just probably use uh, sandstone. So I was working on the underside of the orange fish, and then I was like, alright, I should probably do a progress update after I do this last layer. And then I didn't realize that that last layer that I was doing was actually the last layer of the fish itself. Um, so this is done, I guess, now. It still has to be textured and whatnot, but... The main body of this fish is now done, and it's looking pretty good. It's not great from the other underside, but most people won't be seeing it from its underside, so I'm pretty happy with it. Still needs his red lips right here. These should be red, um, but I don't have any more red concrete, so I have to go get more before I start on the other side of the red fish. Now the Wii Shopping Channel theme is just blasting in my ears, but specifically the Nikki Flowers uh, remix. I thought I'd just update you guys a little bit, so we got red concrete now, so we're starting construction on the bottom of this guy. We already got one layer down, and now we're just starting on the second layer, and then after that there's just a really easy third layer. So we're already basically halfway done, the first layer is the hardest. 
And this guy is already done. It took very little time now that I knew actually kind of what I was doing. Um, so yeah, we got both of the koi fish done when it comes to meshing them out, making them, I don't know. So we gotta still texture them and fill this pond with water. I think we're actually gonna fill it with water first though. Uh, that way we can get underneath and just really focus on texturing without having to make scaffolding and whatnot again. Um, so yeah, I think we should get started. Filling this in with water should be pretty easy. I already made a diagonal over here as you guys can see. So theoretically, if we just continue down placing water on these blocks, then it should fill in most of the area, theoretically. And then I'd probably have to come in and do a little bit by hand, but that's okay. I kind of figured I would. Now you might be wondering why I covered my fishy and pond in stone. And the answer is because um, I apparently don't know how water works. And basically I tried to place it at diagonal so that it would fill in the whole thing automatically and that did not work. Uh, which means that we now have to go under and place it all by hand. Now you also might be wondering, TNT, and why did you do it so that you have to place it on the bottom instead of just bringing this layer down too and placing it on the top of it in the correct spot? Uh, and the answer is that I only thought about that right when I finished and I'm being a real Dumbo. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're gonna be doing a little bit of extra work to get all of this uh, how we want it to look. But I'm okay doing it. I'm really excited. I'm super excited to see the finished product. So let's get started. Two seconds later. Yeah, wait, no. I'm just realizing that this will be an absolute pain. Because apparently if water is running down from the ceiling and then you place a water at diagonal, um, then those will not make an infinite source. Uh, so yeah, this would this is gonna take absolutely forever if I do it the way I'm planning to do it. So we're gonna bring uh, this whole stone layer down to, and then we'll place it on top. Ah, <sighs> this thing took me like half an hour to make. I'm not happy. After about 45 minutes ish, we finally have it on the correct layer, and now we can be placing water on top instead of underneath, and this should create a. Yeah, renewable water source, which is exactly what we wanted. So I think we should be able to go at diagonal and just place water and it should fill in most of this area. And it was actually not challenging at all to set up all the water too. Basically just did that diagonal like I said. Um, and then it got most of it done. It was pretty good, but I had to go in and basically place water all along the sides too. And then, and then basically it was good to go. We had a little bit of uh, things that we had to do over here by the fins, but that was really, really easy. Uh, so I think, I think we're ready to take out the stone and then do a little bit of finishing touches for like underneath the fish and whatnot where the water might not really look too great. And here we go, I took out all the stone, so now we just have to basically uh, put water on the bottom of the fish and then we're good to go. This is already looking really, really cool so far. Um, and I'm so happy to see this almost complete. I've been, I've been really, really excited to start working on this uh, whole project and now that it's actually coming close to being finished, it's, I'm just so happy, so excited. We officially have this side of the pond all done when it comes to water. Still need to texture this guy, uh, but that should not be that hard. Uh, so yeah, we're making slow progress. This is actually more challenging than I expected it to be. Uh, but you know what? As long as we're making progress, I'm happy. You know, after realizing I could literally just make more buckets, life was a lot easier and I finished a lot faster. So yeah, this whole area is filled in with water, officially. Um, it looks great! So I haven't actually taken an overhead view yet, so let us fly up and see what this looks like from the clouds. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Especially the fins. Oh my gosh, I'm looking up. I'm going again. This looks so good. I'm so excited to texture these Look at that. Oh That is that looks so nice. Oh nice and now we get land and water too <laughs> Which I mean makes a little difference, I guess All right, so texturing is next, but I think I need to go eat. I'm I'm really hungry <laughs> And after just a little bit more work and continually going back to my testing world and taking a look at the original guys, uh, I finally finished the Koi Pond, and I I love it so much. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, I've been super nervous about starting this project, but now that it's actually done, I'm so, so happy with the final product. Um, and I think this is a great first start to our base. So next we're gonna get basically the surrounding area. We're gonna be doing some towers and whatnot. 
uh, and then really just making this into like a nice city oasis. We're gonna have a border hopefully in the future. Uh, and I'm really excited to see where I take this base. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all I have time for today, guys. I really appreciate you checking out this video. Uh, but before I go, I should probably, should probably fix my zombification. Alright, let's see how this works. So I'm pretty sure I just splash myself with a potion of weakness. And then eat this apple. Okay. I don't really feel anything yet. It's kind of chilly though, considering that we're in the nether. Oh gosh, ooh. Ooh, I am starting to shake. Oh my gosh, I am so cold. I mean, I think it's normal to shake though. Whew, okay, I'm feeling a little bit better. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot warmer now. I think. Yeah, it worked! Alright, that wasn't that bad. Cool. Alright, great, we're back at our normal skin, so I think. I think that's a good way to round up today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, before I go, check out Sticky Piston. Yeah! Sticky Piston is the Minecraft server hosting company that offers amazing and powerful servers for a great price. Sticky Piston also has many different types of servers to choose from, such as vanilla, modded Minecraft, minigame maps, and more. They also have a great and easy way to control your server so you don't have to go through all these different web pages and whatnot. Um, it's also great for be beginners like myself at making your own server, um, and if you do get confused with anything, uh, their customer support is great and they can help you with almost any problem that you could have. Uh, so there's a link in the description if you want to go check them out, and I highly suggest you should because I'm not, uh, they're not sponsoring me because like, they're like, oh, I want to sponsor you. No, I actually want them to sponsor me because I think, I believe, I really love their product and I think that they're doing a great job with it. Um, so yeah, definitely go check them out. 